Okay, so we're going to do our baptisms now. So we have three people we're going to be baptizing. Yeah, very exciting. We've saved the best till last. So what is baptism? Uh, baptism is a symbol of our death and resurrection with Jesus. So we're not saved through baptism. We have our tank over here filled with water. But this, is, this represents a grave. This is like Jesus being buried in the tomb. So just as Jesus was laid in the tomb, when we profess Jesus, we get baptized. And the idea is to do this publicly, which is what's happening today. And we get poured, uh, you know, pushed down, held down under the water. No, you just get laid back under the water. And uh, that represents you know, your sin being washed away and being buried with Christ. And then as you're drawn out of the water, that is resurrection. That's coming back to life with Jesus from the grave. And so uh, it has such profound meaning and it's such a profound, this is like your Christian birthday, the day that you get baptized. So it's such a special occasion. Let's welcome up our three bat baptizees. I don't know the word for that, but we got Mary Angeli, Josh and Maya. All right, you can go first, Mary Angeli. in the times that I went to church when I was young, I wasn't conscious and knowledgeable about who God was. I didn't know how to pray and I didn't know what was prayer either. After so many years of going through life without prayer, without reading the Bible and without seeking God myself, I went to church again. In 2011 or 2012, I was scared of a skull known as the death skull. That was in an, apart in an apartment that I was living at. No, the skull was not mine. No, yeah, not mine. That skull, uh, that skull feeling weird, feeling down, feeling lost, having to move out of a house that I was living at for more than nine years and because of a lot of witchcraft things that were around me prompted me to go to church, to go to a church. Before I didn't know who God was, I visited some witchcraft places and I visited a witch that read my cards. Um, I don't believe in card readings and in witchcraft places anymore. I was saved by Jesus so many times. I tried drugs or I was super drunk and he saved me from that one day. One day I was calling on him to take away that, the feeling that I was feeling. I was saying, God, please help me, please help me. And he took the feeling away. I did not, I did not know anything about who God was. Oh. I did not know anything about who was God, about what he created, what he did for people, about what was sin, who was Jesus Christ, about prayer, and about what prayer can do. No one in my family had ever told me anything about those things. In 2011 or 2012, a pastor from Brickyard Church, Pastor Mike, he explained to me who Jesus Christ was and what Jesus Christ did for me that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. First, Pastor Mike asked me if I knew who Jesus Christ was, what did he do for me and, what, and for people that believe in him. And I told him no, that I did not, did not know none of that. I didn't know who Jesus Christ was and what he did for me. Then that day, Pastor Mike made me understand more about Jesus Christ. We prayed together and I, and I got an understanding about prayer. God saved me, saved me from living for the rest of my life with a bullet in my left thigh, from probably losing my left leg because I was shot on my left thigh. He saved me from dying because I had fell in the water in an ocean in Florida and I was saved and pulled out out the water by my mom and by a friend. I didn't do any cheerleading, any sports, or any dancing classes when I was in middle school and in high school because of that bullet. But in 2014, that bullet, bullet got removed. God has shown me that he is always there. He picks me up. God is a healer and a listener. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. So that was Mary Angeli. This is Maya. Good morning. 
Despite the gloomy weather, at least it was a couple hours ago when I wrote this, my heart is light today because today we celebrate my baptism into Christianity. While my family is not able to join us at this time, the most important ingredients in my own religious recipe are present. God, my loving partner, my church family, my amazing dog puppy, who is here in spirit because he hasn't mastered his church manners yet, <laughs> and my faith and desire to follow Jesus and invite him into my daily life. I became interested in Trinity as soon as I moved to Edgewater. It was the Sunday before Mayor Lightfoot locked the city down for COVID. I went to services online here and there, but I was lacking the human connection piece that I longed for. I was an observer, but not a participant. In the fall of 2023, I felt the need to reconcile some biblical and historical questions I had. When you get to know me, you'll know that I have a weird need to know everything about everything. I knew immediately that Pastor Matt was the one to guide me, but how I knew will remain a divine mystery. After indulging this skeptical newcomer for quite some time, Pastor Matt invited me to join Alpha Group, where I explored my questions and made the human connections at Trinity that I'd been missing since COVID. Trinity has everything I need, spiritual guidance, quality fellowship, opportunities for service and growth. It's my port in the storm, and I'm in the midst of a few tempests right now. Jesus, Trinity, and my people are helping me weather today's ups and downs. They say that growth comes from struggle. If that's the case, I should be a fully grown human being soon, because I'm struggling a lot lately. Nothing insurmountable, I hope, but I need God and Trinity now more than ever. Today, I'm here before you to tell you that I am following the glory and joy of Jesus, my teacher. Today is a celebration and a confirmation that I have a life worth living with Trinity and Jesus. I can do good in the world, and the world can do good for me. I'm ready to participate in a wiser, gentler way of life. God is good. Awesome. This is Josh, everybody. A little taller. You know, they say when you're, you're nervous and you're standing in front of people, you should imagine them in their underwear. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that today because my stepmother's here. <laughs> um, I actually, I actually um, asked God this morning for strength to read what I'm about to read. Yeah. And your sermon did that. As a child, start. You're good. Take your time. Let me get you a little closer. There you go. I was raised Catholic, attending church with my father, but upon entering high school and um, college, religion became less and less important to me. I think my falling away started with people including people in my high school and family members calling me gay and all the derogatory words that come with it. Even before I identified that way. In my mind, I would question how people who went to church could say such things and why I would want to surround myself with these people. When I went up to college, I fully embraced the gay community. I felt included. I felt like I belonged. I felt like that could be myself, but over time, I became too, too involved. It started out joining a gay bowling league, then a gay dodgeball league, then a gay kickball league, which if you haven't played doll kickball, that's actually really fun. You could even do it. <laughs> All you have to do is kick and run. So it culminated with me drinking in bars until after midnight most days of the week. A lot of that lifestyle revolves around drugs, alcohol, and sexual immorality, and I was by no means a mere bystander in that community. For, for me, it led to anxiety, hopelessness, and other feelings of worthlessness. It also made me hang, up, hang on to things for too long. I did not know how to forgive or let go. I know there had to be more to life than this, and I slowly just turned myself away from that, 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 that scene. When COVID began, I uh, replaced the gay community with simply drinking at home alone. It led to weight gain, high blood pressure, and it a deep state of depression. It wasn't until March of last year where I finally had a breakthrough to say I needed to change things and I needed help. I prayed, I asked God for help, I started to go to therapy, and I started to exercise again. 
Last summer, I began to see more overt examples of God inserting himself into my life, starting with putting and urging me to download the Bible to my phone, and then to the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, or as I should call it, seven degrees of Trinity Church, that it took me to get to attend online, join a small group, attend service in person, and ultimately baptism. He also helped me to reconcile what I thought was my sexual identity to what an identity of righteousness with God really is. I want to thank Pastor Matt and Heather for welcoming me into their home. I also want to thank Team Pineapple and Small Group Luke, <laughs> Jafet, Amanda, Ordi, Sam, Bree, and especially Ken, who got me towels this morning. <laughs> um, trust that I may, I may not say a lot, but I am certainly learning a lot and listening a lot. I'm learning, to, I'm learning forgiveness and being largely estranged for the past 14 years. My father and stepmother are here to witness me accepting God as my Lord and Savior. With that, I want to say that today, I don't identify as gay, I don't identify as straight, instead I simply identify as a follower of Jesus. It's a little cold, it's not too bad. All right, Maya, I have a question for you. Have you repented of your sins and placed your faith in Christ alone? I have. And it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for Maya. Thank you for the faith she's found in you. And I pray that you would fill her with your Holy Spirit. Lord, that you would help her live for you and that the storms that she's going through, Lord, be the peace, be her pillow in the storm, be her rest in the storm and strengthen her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take your glasses off too. All right, I've got a question for you. Have you repented of your sin? and put your faith in Christ alone. Yes. Then it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let's pray. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for Mary Angeli. Lord, that you saved her from evil. You saved her from death. Lord, you saved her from injury. Lord, and we just pray your blessings over her. Fill her with your power and your spirit. And let her light shine bright in Jesus' name. Amen. Josh told me he'd done a polar plunge before, so this is nothing. All right. Josh, have you repented of your sins and placed your faith in Christ alone? And it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for Josh. Thank you for his vulnerability and, and how brave he was to share his testimony with us today and how open uh, he was. And Lord, I thank you for your work of salvation in his life. Lord, that you love him. Lord, that you cherish him. Lord, that you've called him out of the world and into your kingdom. And Lord, I pray for just continued spiritual growth. Fill him with your power and your spirit. Help his light shine bright for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.